The sun is the subject of the first experience in Investigation 16, the universe. The key learning objectives are to model the sun's characteristics and energy production and explain the inner processes that produce the energy we on Earth eventually receive. We obviously can't physically go to the sun to experiment, but we can learn from the sun by investigating the energy it gives us. In this experience, you will plan an investigation to model sunlight intensity. But before we get there, we'll launch the inquiry with two everyday phenomena related to the energy of our star. How is light from the sun related to why some plants are green? Something you are no doubt familiar with is how sunlight can affect the cells within plants. You know that many plants grow leaves and turn green in the spring season as the temperatures and the weather changes and as the Earth's surface gets exposed to more sunlight and that this process continues through the summer. This concept can be demonstrated using ultraviolet beads. Watch and observe the changes in the beads' colors as they are taken outside and exposed to the ultraviolet rays of sunlight. Notice that when the beads are taken out of the sunlight and brought back inside, they return to their original state. Why did the beads change color? Why did the sunlight change the beads? We can answer that the beads changed color because they absorbed sunlight, and that this sunlight contains energy that the beads react with. So, to make the connection between the beads and plants, how does sunlight affect plants and their color? Think about the seasonal changes throughout the year. Plants absorb sunlight and are green and healthy. Without sunlight, they can become brown and unhealthy. Another everyday phenomenon you may have seen in pictures or videos, or if you were lucky, in person, is the aurora, a beautiful dancing light show in the night sky near the Earth's poles. How do these incredible colors come about? They happen when the sun ejects or sends out large amounts of energized particles, and those particles interact with the Earth's atmosphere to create the auroras. Check this video. Do you know? What is an aurora? If you're ever near the North or South Pole, you may be in for a very special treat. Frequently there are beautiful light shows in the sky. These lights are called auroras. If you're near the North Pole, it is called an aurora borealis or northern lights. If you're near the South Pole, it is called an aurora australis or the southern lights. When a solar storm comes toward us, some of the energy and small particles can travel down the magnetic field lines, at the north and south poles into Earth's atmosphere. What can you hypothesize about the characteristics of the Sun based on these mass ejections? In other words, how does the fact that the Sun spews out excess amounts of energy at times indicate anything about the processes that may be happening at its surface. Now that we have demonstrated some of the ways the sun's energy affects our planet, we turn to this experience's inquiry lab, titled Sunlight Intensity and Solar Flares. Here's an overview. The lab's essential question is, how does sunlight intensity change with the solar flare. Your task will be to plan an investigation using a solar panel and light sources to model the energy from the sun. How can you use different light sources to model different light intensities from the sun? Continue on to watch the lab's overview. Our sun is a main sequence star and the energy it produces is how life on Earth is able to flourish. The sun is primarily composed of hydrogen and helium. Hydrogen makes up about 70% of its composition and helium about 25%. The remaining amount is a mix of oxygen, carbon, neon, and iron. The sun is essentially a giant nuclear fusion reactor. It has three main parts that make up its structure. The core, the radiative zone, and the convection zone. The core is at an extremely high temperature and pressure, which is what makes nuclear fusion possible. The radiative zone is the next layer after the core. 
This is where the energy generated in the core is transported in the form of electromagnetic radiation. The last layer is the convection zone. Here, the energy is transferred by convection instead of radiation. Like Earth, the Sun also has magnetic fields. These magnetic fields can get tangled and during reorganization emit a solar flare, which is a large explosion of energy from the Sun's surface. It is often accompanied by a coronal mass ejection, which is plasma ejected from the surface. The Sun can also produce solar storms, which is when solar flares become more prominent. This intense burst of radiation can damage the satellites we use for navigation and communication. It is also hazardous to astronauts if they are on a spacewalk when a solar flare occurs. The Sun's surface activity is closely monitored, and if solar flares are expected, satellites can be put into safe mode and astronauts avoid the spacewalks. Solar flares are less likely to damage a solar panel compared to other electronic equipment. The protons and electrons emitted in a solar flare are mostly stopped by our magnetic field, creating auroras. In this lab you will model the sunlight that reaches Earth from the sun with flashlights, a solar panel, and a multimeter. It is important to minimize the amount of light reaching the solar panel from the classroom. This can be done by placing the solar panel in a box. When using the different flashlights, be consistent in the distance and angle they are held with respect to the solar panel. Both angle and distance affect how much energy the panel absorbs. Also be careful not to let your hand that is holding the flashlight cast a shadow on the panel. The value on the multimeter is not likely to stabilize completely. This is normal. Simply record the values that are stable. You will observe the change in energy between standard visible light and the increase in intensity produced by solar flares. Great. So, you are up to speed on the background and setup of this lab. In class, we will make some minor adjustments to the materials and data collection procedure. But, overall we can follow the instructions and suggestions from the overview video. The biggest difference in our class materials for this lab will be the use of a voltage sensor and LabQuest in place of the multimeter. Take a box and place a solar panel inside to prevent it from being exposed to ambient or available light. To prepare for voltage readings, connect the differential voltage probe to the LabQuest by any of the three analog ports which are on the side. The initial voltage reading should be near zero. You can tap the red bar on the screen and click zero to calibrate the sensor if necessary. Now, Take the probes of the voltage sensor and connect them to the leads of the solar panel, making sure to match the red positive and black negative leads and connect metal from the probe to metal from the leads of the panel. When you connect the voltage probe to the LabQuest, by default, the duration of collection is 18 seconds. Change that to 10 seconds by clicking the gray duration box and making the change. Now you are ready to collect some data. Notice that as shown in the overview video, the voltage reading is fluctuating or continuously changing. Instead of doing guesswork, we can press play and let it take voltage readings for 10 seconds and then we can find the average reading over that time span of 10 seconds later. So I'm going to press play here. And while it's collecting data, let me remind you that you can save runs by clicking the file cabinet icon, and you can erase and retry a current trial by simply pressing play again after the run has been completed. You should aim to take two to three trials of data for each flashlight, and then find the average of your trials. Okay, let's find the average data reading. Click Analyze at the top of the screen and select Statistics. Then check the voltage box. A box on the right of the screen now shows the significant stats of this run, including maximum, minimum, and average voltage, which it lists as the mean. Click into this box and take the mean reading. Repeat these steps with your different flashlights, ensuring to keep each flashlight at the same angle and the same distance from the solar panel each time. 
Take a few repeat trials for each flashlight. The more data, the better. Be sure to have your data table set up approved by your instructor. Have fun, collect some data, let's talk after, enjoy. Thank you.